subscribe this channel for educational videos and also don't forget to press the bell icon in order to get the instant notifications of our latest stuff hello everyone i welcome you all to this online course on wireless communication today we will study about uh, personal communication service uh, some features of uh, our server concept and uh, also we will discuss about frequency reuse concept so let's start this lecture personal communication service it is a type of wireless mobile service with advanced coverage that delivers services at more personal level uh, that means you need to install more number of antennas to blanket a particular geographic area for example in first generation we used to use uh, a bigger base station uh, which was used to cover uh, an area of about 50 miles or maybe more than that uh, but in second generation and onwards second generation uh, and that is in personal communications uh, systems we have to deploy more number of smaller antennas in order to cover the same geographic area so that the services can be delivered at more personal level and these antennas they also help in the uh, to assist in the extending uh, the mobility support uh, to the system uh, for example we provide smaller smaller antennas and these smaller smaller antennas for a particular region or for a particular geographic area they assist the mobility uh, for the inter domain movement okay and this is uh, a service that is similar to cellular systems and it is applied on the systems which are digital that is second generation onwards okay and we use more number of antennas to assist the mobility uh, that is the intradomain mobility as the user moves around around and uh, the user's phone signal is picked up by the nearest antenna that is a smaller antenna in in a particular region and that is forwarded to a base station and this is how your mobile station is connected to the PSTN network the wired network this personal communication service has uh, three categories. Uh, the number one category is narrow band, and uh, after that we have broadband, and we have uh, unlicensed category. In narrow band, uh, that indicates uh, we have very narrow uh, band of radio frequency. That is uh, approximately three megahertz of radio spectrum is used in narrow band. And this 3 megahertz of spectrum is uh, used uh, for uh, transmission of uh, messages, transmission of voice messages uh, or the other messages like numeric or alphanumeric messages, for example, our paging system. And on the other hand, this broadband category, uh, here we have 140 megahertz of radio spectrum, uh, which can be used for internet, data and multimedia services. Okay and uh, the third one is unlicensed which means that unutilized spectrum uh, can be used for the transmission of uh, voice or messages uh, or whatever uh, this unutilized uh, spectrum is used for the communication okay and this uh, pcs uh, personal communication service it is distinguished from the uh, cellular systems uh, like in cellular systems particularly in 1g uh, we were not having perfect wireless phone we were having car phones they were associated with the cars and we had the mobility feature but uh, that was associated with the cars and in personal communication services we have our uh, full-fledged mobile phone mobile station that we can keep in our pockets and we can move freely in a particular area and in the present time whatever the services of cellular system we are using you can say that these are the personal communication services okay and according to uh, some report given by an American telecommunication uh, company, uh, the report is called a Sprint Report. Approximately 230 million people can avail this PCS service. Okay. TDMA, CDMA, and GSM, along with 2G, 3G, and 4G, are some technologies that are used in PCS. That is what I was saying that uh, second generation onwards whatever the server system we are using that can be categorized as pcs okay now uh, pcs architecture here you see a typical uh, architecture for personal communication services this is the one region 
uh, as shown in this diagram and this one is the other region and in each region uh, you can see that there is a base station and along with this base station you have smaller antennas installed in the same region in order to give the more coverage uh, to, a, to this geographic area and this geographic area is uh, this base station is connected to this MSC and this MSC has these following records pertaining to the customers and the uh, different hardware components in the network and here you see the first component this first record that is called as home location register and this register contains all the necessary details of customers subscribers uh, like customer ID like their billing address uh, authentication schemes uh, that are being used for those subscribers uh, some other details they, which are necessary for a particular subscriber okay then you have VLR that is visitor location re register uh, and this register is created when uh, the user or mobile station moves from one place to another place and uh, for example if a user moves from uh, the coverage area of base station A to the coverage area of the base station B in that case uh, the details from the HLR are copied to the VLR uh, on temporary basis when the user moves to the uh, coverage area of base station B okay and when uh, it moves back to its own uh, home network that is to the coverage area of uh, base station A then these VLR details are omitted okay then there is uh, another reg register that is called as uh, equipment identity register and uh, this uh, keeps the log of uh, different components hardware components that are used in a network and it uh, keeps the record of legitimate and illegitimate uh, components uh, like there are some um, network components which are with the fake serials or fake uh, mac addresses and it keeps the track of all those uh, things that is called as a equipment identity register and here on the right side you have uh, this MSC is connected to the your backbone network that is PSTN and this is another MSC which uh, can assist other geographic area or it, it can be connected to other base stations. So this is a typical uh, PCS architecture and it is very much similar to your uh, GS, GSM architecture. Okay. Now features of uh, cellular concept. As we see that the PCS is also a, a part of your uh, cellular systems and we will see in this uh, slide uh, certain features of these uh, cellular systems or you can say cellular concept. Uh, this cellular concept is uh, very much helpful to solve the problem of uh, spectral congestion and uh, user capacity and when we deploy more number of uh, antennas so this uh, also increases the capacity that means you can accommodate more number of users in a particular region this cellular concept is a system level idea where you are replacing a high power transmitter that is that was in the first generation and with the low power small cell transmitters that is second generation onwards in the second gen generation onwards you have to deploy more number of smaller antennas and this will uh, make your uh, sm uh, cells uh, of smaller size and the power transmission of those smaller cells or from those smaller antennas will be less as compared to the antennas that we were using in the first generation so this is the kind of approach that we are using uh, in the second generation onwards now in the cellular systems uh, uh, a portion of total number of channels is allocated to each base station and nearby base stations are assigned different group of channels okay this is to avoid the interference problem uh, for example we have uh, a total bandwidth x and uh, uh, a portion of uh, total number of channels out of that bandwidth is assigned to a base station and the other base station that is the adjoining base station to a particular base station they are assigned with the different group of channels just to avoid the interference that is the another feature another approach in the cellular systems the available channels are distributed over a geographic area and may be used as long as interference between co-channel stations is kept below acceptable levels okay the total number of channels which are available to us they are distributed over a geographic area and the distance between the co-channel stations 
that means co-channel stations or co-channel cells are those cells which are using the same frequency channels okay for example we are using x channels in cell a and we can use those x channels in some cell x but by providing a sufficient isolation between the two cells sufficient distance between the two cells in order to keep the interference away okay or it should be kept below the acceptable levels fine that is the approach in these cellular systems as the demand for service is increased the number of base stations are increased with corresponding decreasing transmission power okay when we have to accommodate more users that means the demand to service is increased and for that purpose we have to install more number of smaller antennas in order to uh, reuse the same channels again in the different cells after providing some sufficient uh, gap between the two cells and this will increase uh, this will increase the capacity but it will also result in decrease of the transmission power because we have to uh, avoid the interference as well so that's why we have to decrease the transmission power of the transmitters or the antennas okay so these are some features uh, in the cellular system and because of this approach you have additional radio frequency and you have an increased capacity that means you can accommodate more users in a same geographic area by this approach fine now next is the frequency reuse concept okay as we see that our cellular systems or cellular radio systems they rely on intelligent allocation and reuse of channels what i said in the previous slide that if we are using some x frequency channels in a particular a cell then these x uh, frequency channels can be reused again in some b cell or in some other cell by providing sufficient gap between the two cells okay that is what we call as a frequency reuse concept and here by limiting the coverage area within the boundaries of a cell the same group of channels may be used to cover different cells separated by a distance large enough to keep the interference level tolerable so the uh, what we have to see that we have to keep the interference level tolerable and uh, so that we can make the uh, calls we can make the voice conversation without any noise okay that we should keep in our mind in the these cellular systems we uh, you can see this is a typical cellular systems and here you can see uh, the frequency reuse concept uh, can be seen from the from this diagram uh, like uh, here i am using a cluster size of 7 a b c d e f and g this whole constitutes a cluster and you can see here we have one two three and four clusters which are covering a particular geographic area and one more thing here is we are using the same cells or you can say we are using the same frequency channels which for example we are using some frequency channels in this cell a and the same frequency channels will be used in cell a here and a here and a here similarly it is true for all the other cells okay and one more thing uh, i want to tell here that uh, we are using these hexagonal cell shapes in order to cover a particular geographic area in the cellular systems why we are using these hexagonal shapes to cover a particular uh, region uh, one thing is that if we use the circular shapes and then we have to cover a particular area fully then we have to uh, there is a overlap uh, between these uh, uh, circular shapes like this and this you will have overlap if you want to cover the whole area if you don't go for the overlapping approach then there will be certain voids certain gaps between the two uh, cell boundaries and that's why we are using uh, these hexagonal shapes now you can say that there are other shapes like equilateral triangle or square they can also uh, cover the um, a particular area fully without uh, overlapping but uh, for that reason i will say that as compared to those two shapes this hexagonal shape 
uh, has more area and we require uh, the area of these hexagonal shapes uh, is more as compared to those two shapes and hence we require less number of these hexagonal cells in order to cover a particular region okay and the other uh, reason for uh, using these hexagonal shapes is that uh, this hexagonal shape approximates the circular shape uh, more as compared to the other two shapes that is square and equilateral triangle fine next we have uh, center excited cells and edge excited cells uh, there are two types of uh, cells in the cell system center excited cell means we have a base station at the center of the cell and in the edge excited cells means we have the base stations located at the edges of these uh, cells okay and in edge excited cells uh, we have to use three different antennas at the uh, three corners out of the six corners of this uh, hexagonal cell and we use sectored antennas in the edge excited cells whereas uh, in the center excited cells we use uh, omnidirectional antenna at the center of the cell fine now channels clusters and capacity of a cellular system uh, suppose uh, we have a, a cellular system and uh, uh, in, in that cellular system we have uh, total number of uh, s duplex channels uh, are available and then out of those uh, s channels k channels are allocated to a cell so we have total number of s channels that are duplex channels duplex means we have both way communication and uh, out of those s available channels the k channels are allocated to a particular cell then we can say that uh, k is less than s obviously k is a part of s and uh, k is less than s and if s channels that means the total number of channels are divided into n cells uniquely and disjointly that means with same number of channels we assign to the different cells to n cells uh, out of those uh, total s channels we divide these s channels into uh, n cells and each cell uh, is assigned with the same number of channels then the total number of radio channels will be equal to kn okay then s will be equal to kn this k is the number of channels assigned to a single cell particular cell and if these channel channels are divided over n number of cells then we can, can say that s equal to k into n okay and now what is n this n is the cluster size okay the n cells which collectively used to complete set of available frequencies okay we have a set of frequencies and those available frequencies will be distributed over some number of cells and those number of cells uh, are called as the n that means that is called as a cluster okay and if a cluster is replicated m times for example if we have some uh, x megahertz of frequency uh, available frequency channels and they are you know distributed over uh, n different cells okay and uh, for example four or seven cells and those four or seven cells they are replicated m times to cover a particular geographic area then the total number of duplex channels will be equal to m k n means already we have k n that is the total number of channels distributed over n cells fine and then when these n cells are replicated m times then the total number of duplex channels will be m into kn okay as we see that this kn equal to s so it will be equal to ms and this ms this ms is called as the capacity of a cellular system that means the capacity the number of users uh, can be accommodated in a particular region okay this factor n the cluster size it can uh, range from 4 7 12 and so on but uh, we go and prefer for uh, smaller uh, these cluster sizes because uh, we can uh, replicate uh, these uh, n uh, many number of times uh, in order to reuse the frequency uh, that is assigned to a particular cell 
fine okay this is what we uh, say that with reduced number of n more clusters are required to cover a region and hence more capacity when we require more uh, num clusters which means that we require more number of cells that means more number of base stations and hence more number of base stations we have more number of channels and because of that more number of people can be accommodated and hence it is increases the capacity of a cellular system okay so uh, now let's see a problem uh, on this uh, on these cellular systems okay this is the problem here you see uh, the question is if a total of 50 megahertz of bandwidth is allocated to a cellular telephone system which uses 25 kilohertz of simplex channels simplex channels to provide full duplex channels compute the number of channels available per cell with system of four cell frequency reuse means the cluster size is four seven cell frequency reuse means the cluster size is seven and the cluster size is 12 okay so first of all we have the total bandwidth that is uh, 50 megahertz we have the total bandwidth and the channel bandwidth is 25 kilohertz okay and as these are the 25 kilohertz are the simplex channels and if we want uh, the communication in the full duplex mode we have to multiply it with the two because a full duplex channel contains the two simplex channels so that's why i'm multiplying here with the factor two okay then the full duplex channel bandwidth will become 50 kilohertz fine and as this quantity is in the kilohertz so we have to convert this 50 megahertz into kilohertz form so this 50 megahertz will be equal to 50,000 kilohertz okay and then total available channels so we have the total bandwidth that is 50,000 kilohertz it is divided by 50 kilohertz that is the 10 channel bandwidth and so we get the 1000 total channels that these are the full duplex channels and when we have a cluster size of 4 that means we have to use four cells to cover a geographic area and these four cells will be replicated any number of times in order to cover a particular area okay but for now we have n equal to 4 we have to calculate the number of channels in each cell that means we have four cells so in each cell we will have 1000 divided by 4 so 250 channels in each cell okay for a cluster size of uh, 7 that means several cell, cell, uh, cells will be used to cover a geographic area and you can replicate these seven cells any number of times in order to cover a geographic area if you need to more cells you can replicate these seven cells and the total number of channels in a cell that will be equal to 1000 divided by 7 that is one approximately uh, 143 channels these are the approximately uh, 143 channels which will be there in each cell and when you replicate the uh, these uh, cells in order to cover a geographic area same channels will be used that is because of frequency reuse concept and uh, you will provide sufficient distance between the two uh, co-channel cells and then you can replicate you can reuse the same channels uh, any number of times and then the third part is when you have cluster size 12 then it will be 1000 divided by 12 and you will get approximately 83 channels in each cell okay so when you when you have smaller cluster size that means you are using less number of cells to cover a geographic area then you will have more number of channels in a particular cell and more number of channels means you can accommodate more number of users so this one is the preferred way to have the cluster size okay the smaller cluster size is always preferred in the uh, cellular systems because it gives you the more capacity more you can accommodate more number of users fine so this is all uh, what we have to uh, we had to study in this uh, today's lecture uh, thank you for watching this lecture